Good evening, fellow Plexers. This video is from Mike, who posted in Plexaholics that um, you idiots got me considering leaving Mint and moving to Unraid. I was going to add it to my B-Link nut, but when I look at the specs for Unraid, it says this is required. Two hard disk drives to ensure data protection with parity disks, and his plan was to use the internal SSD for the server and let it attach to a Synology NAS. So, Mike, I'm going to send you a playlist of everything I've accomplished. <clears throat> I'm using a 11th gen Intel NUC, Intel branded NUC, with an i5 processor in it. The system only has two drive options, one NVMe slot and one SATA SSD slot. So first, let's go to the main tab. Now, my array is running. And first off, you need a storage device for Unraid to be able to start whatever arrays are running. So I use just a sacrificial um, 64 gigabyte flash drive. And you can see that I'm only using a tiny bit of it. It's not really doing anything. It's just there as a required drive. And then I've joined my two different Western Digital Red drives into what Unraid calls a cache pool. Now you're coming from the world of Synology and Synology DSM. And when you think of cache on the Synology side, you think of temporary storage that goes poof when you power down your machine. Well, Unraid is different. This cache pool with these two cache drives is simply normal storage that's redundant. So when you reboot, or turn your machine off, or it gets um, um, shut down through a power loss and then reboots, Everything's still on these cache pool drives. So if I click into it, you'll see this app data folder, and then you'll see my Docker containers. And if you're running Plex on your Synology NAS as a package or as a, a um, Docker container, it's the same old structure. Linux is Linux. So once you get down to the Plex Media Server subfolder. It's the same no matter how you're running on your Synology NAS. So my video will show that you can easily move it to Unraid and all you have to do is um, use the unassigned devices plugin to map your um, shared folder on the Synology NAS. So it's all pretty easy. So this is a RAID 1 redundant pool um, running BTRFS. So if one of these drives fail, you simply shut Unraid down, pop a new one in, add it to the cache pool. It literally takes five or 10 minutes and you're all set back up and running. So then you gotta use a quality flash drive to boot Unraid. Unraid boots off the flash drive and runs in memory. So I bought a Samsung Fit mini flash drive. A lot of places will recommend using a USB 2 flash drive, but this is a USB 3.1. It works fine. And what you might want to do, I haven't done it myself, but I read that you can buy a little flash drive or a little USB micro SD card reader and use a good quality micro SD card instead of a flash drive. Think of something that's tough like you might use for a camera so it doesn't wear out, something that's rated for a ton of read and writes. I've bought that, a 32 gigabyte um, micro SD card and the little USB reader, but I just haven't got around to switching it for the Unraid boot. So just something to consider, buy a quality flash drive. And then the unassigned devices is an add-on that makes it all point and click to connect to your Synology NAS. Basically, create a new user on your Synology NAS. I call mine Unraid. Give it a, its own password. Make it something uncrackable because you're only going to use it a couple times. And give it read only permission if you don't want a DVR or read write permission if you do want a DVR. So I have two shares that I've got in this Unraid one for Channels DVR and one for Plex. And I'm just going to my shared media folder, which I've simply named Plex on the Synology NAS. So basically, it creates a mount point. And I'll show you later in the video 
I've delayed the start of everything on the unraid NUC so that eight minutes after boot, the Plex container finally starts up. And I've delayed the array from starting for three or four minutes. My 11th gen NUC running unraid will start in two seconds and the Synology NAS won't be up serving files yet. So I had to slow everything down on the unraid side because I've also got a UPS that my Synology NAS is plugged into, a CyberPower, uh, one of the 1100s, the tall one. So that's set to shut down automatically two or three minutes after a power loss. And then under the Sino side in the control panel, you can add an external IP address, which I have of my Unraid server. And then I've installed a NUT protocol over here to accept that, so now this device shuts down two or three minutes after a power loss, and then it reboots like my Synology NAS does when the power is restored. But I had to had to slow everything down because naturally the Synology NAS is slower than this um, little gen of a mini computer. So this is really easy. It's all point and click, and my my playlist will show how to do everything. It's not a direct tutorial where you can follow along step by step, but I made each video after I accomplished everything and went through and described it enough that you shouldn't have a problem. So let's go to the apps first of all, the installed apps. So I've also set App Data Backup to shut down my Unraid server and things are easy to install. Done. So on Wednesday at 3 a.m. all my containers shut down and it takes about 31 minutes but this app data backup shuts the containers down and it makes a backup of all the containers and my Unraid boot flash drive and it um, back up, backs up to a special subfolder in my Plex Media Shared folder on the Synology NAS. Um, so in case of something catastrophic, the NUC blows up and I have to restart everything on a new mini computer, I can be back up and running because of this backup that runs once a week. So I will, I, I will lose a week's worth of new scans in Plex server, but that's easily taken care of when I'm rebuilding things in five minutes to add some custom metadata because I just did it recently. So I'm running Channels DVR also. You've got to install the Dyn Dynamics File Manager. I've got FileBot running here. This way if I travel out of town and I bring something in through all the wonderful star apps that are running on my Synology NAS, which is where they should run to achieve atomic moves, I can rename while I'm out of town. You've got to install the GPU stats and the Intel GPU top. Here's the networking tools to extend the shutdown from Synology DSM to Unraid. Plex is installed, Plex streams, lets you know who's streaming right from the Unraid interface. This is a sacrificial container, and I'll explain that in a second. I didn't move Tautuli over here. I just shut it down on my Synology NAS and installed it over here. So I did lose my old history, but I didn't care about this as long as I kept my Plex history. And I moved the container from the Synology NAS to Unraid very easily. Um, and if you're running as a package, I've got videos showing how to move that package install into a container on the Synology NAS, but you can skip that step. You can just move it right into a container at, from a package to Unraid. And let's see, unassigned devices. You've got to install that to access everything. So it's really easy. Dockers are a joy to use, and I don't use that lightly. It's just a dream to use. And if I edit this, I don't think there's anything I can't show here. Let me hit the advanced view and then show more settings. 
There is a, oh, I'm losing the name of it right now. There is a Ibercorp video that told me everything I needed to know. Let me get a word processor going because I want to pull out this extra parameters. Let's see. Okay, so this is the line that enables the hardware acceleration. This gets the iGPU and the Intel processor going. This line uses half of my 32 gigabytes of RAM for RAM transcoding. So 16 gigabytes are using for RAM transcoding and that prevents extra read and writes to your SSD cache pool array. And then this is just no health check added in at the back. So it's very easy to get this configured and even without watching my whole playlist you might just be able to figure this out yourself from this video, but let me let me edit this. So when I set my container up on the Synology NAS, instead of pointing to the Plex folder, I pointed to subfolders in that. And let me let me show that. It's better to show that first. So I use this for demonstration purposes. And let me start here. Shared folder name media PD. And then I have a sort folder for every type of Plex library. A TV sort folder. Or a TV library sort folder with the individual libraries in here. So what I did when I moved this container over, or actually when I set it up under the Synology NAS, I added five paths. I pointed to all the individual library sort folders and then gave them an alias. I did the same thing when I moved to Unraid, but I probably could have just pointed to the shared media folder, which would have been Plex in my case. That's how I named it. These are all named simply. Movie for the sort library folder. Music, not that you'd have more than one music library. Um, your landing zone for a trash guide setup should be in this shared folder. This enables atomic moves. Um, let's go into the TV library sort folder. My normal TV library, if I want to DVR to a separate folder, um, and a kid's TV library. And this is just for testing this one here. And then I drop the Unraid backup into this folder too. And the reason I do this is this folder is what gets backed up to my older Synology NAS twice a week. I don't have it off site yet. When one of my kids gets gig fiber access, it's going to go live with them. And then I'll have a true backup solution in case catastrophe happens over here. If the whole house burns down and I survive, my Plex server will be backed up off site um, eventually. So in case you're wondering, I also run a test package install of Plex and a test Docker container of Plex on this same Synology NAS. They both can't run at the same time, and right now the Docker container of Plex is running here um, as one of my multiple test servers. So, I simply have a path for each library type, and you could have a path to your whole folder. I thought it would be easier during the move because then I just had to point each um, library at the new folder structure, let it rescan before removing the old folder structure that was set up under the Synology NAS. But this will probably all make sense for you. Um, so I just had to add these in manually and that's about all I did. Spin the container up and once I was sure I had access to the old media through the new path, I could add that and let the library rescan and 
basically like moving any other Linux server before you do it. Go into the settings of the server and turn off emptying the trash automatically after a scan. Turn off any automatic or time scanning that you have set up. I was already on a time scan because I had so many folder structures for a package install or a Docker container install of Plex. I crossed the IO notify limit, so I couldn't do automatic scanning with my big libraries. I had to use time scan, but it just turned off the time scan, turn off the empty trash, shut your server down completely on the Synology NAS, copy the folder structure over to Unraid, and, and basically, once you're set up with um, the um, unassigned devices, I can click in, or you can click in, and go find your container and copy it over to the Unraid cache pool. So I think what I did is I added a third path that had permission to see my shared Docker folder on the Synology, and that's how I copied the container over, and seeing I was copying it and not moving it, it was non-destructive. I could spin it back up on the Synology NAS whenever I wanted, and I waited a while before I deleted that and put a test server on instead. So this is getting long, but basically this is a great little fast server. And sometimes people want to know why I didn't move over my trash guides container. And that's because if they were off the Synology NAS, you'd lose the atomic moves that the trash guide tells you are so important. They're an instantaneous transfer. The um, Saab NZBD brings the file in, it lands within my Plex shared media folder, Sonar or Ladar picks the file up and renames it and moves it into the proper um, library folder structure for Plex, which is also in that shared media folder, and that movement is instant. If I had multiple shared folders for my media, like a movie shared folder, a TV show shared folder, a music shared folder, and then I had a separate shared folder for the Saab NZBD acquisitions. Well, that's a long copy then delete process that just slows everything down. So there's no need to bring those containers over here. Um, I lose so much efficiency even though they would be running on a fast SSD array. So hopefully this all makes sense to you. And if it doesn't, you can watch my longer playlist that I'll also share with you. So. Congratulations, join the idiot club. I think you'll be very happy because I view Unraid as really an extension of my Synology NAS and it's pretty cool. So let me show you that last little bit. Let me start up a stream someplace. So nobody's streaming on my server. So let me start up the Plex HTPC client app. And let's see, I don't know what server I have access because I use Ubuntu as a testing ground someplace, or sometimes. Yeah, so it's pointed at a different server than my normal one. All right, so let me start up this show. Or maybe you think it's because I'll kill it. Case closed. Okay, so you see I'm, I'm watching Ellis. Let me shrink this screen down a little bit. So it's season one. I'm watching the third episode. So this is just a quick little way to see who's streaming on your server. And it's a nice little add-on just to be a little bit cooler. And then, of course, you can add your own graphic. Um, here, you don't have to use the default one from Unraid or, or one of the choices that Unraid has. I think Unraid's fantastic. I don't know if I'd want to move my storage from the Synology ecosystem to Unraid, but if I've never owned a Synology NAS before, Unraid's so cool, I could see myself using it for storage also. But having my DSM experience, I'm not moving my storage off from that. 
and I'm too heavily invested with my backup NAS to even consider it. So, thanks for watching and happy plexing.